Good morning, everyone. It's Saturday, and it's um, been oh, it's just past twelve. Um, I am going to do a uh, really different pour, only three colors, and it's going to be bright. So I'm not sure how it's going to turn out, but it's just in sort of experimental. Okay, first off, my um, my sponsors for August. This is my list. There you go, nice and close up. So put it on pause if you want to check it out. This is the updated until just 30 minutes ago. So thank you all very much for supporting my channel. Now I have a 30 by 30 canvas and I have this color, orange, and I have yellow, and I have ta-da, blue. <laughs> this is going to be something. So um, I've seen a couple of pours where um, there was blue, um, orange, and yellow, and it was just so amazing. But you have to have a little bit of luck that the colors don't mix too much. Because when the uh, the orange and the blue sort of mixes, it gives that brownish color. So you have to watch out that that doesn't happen. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I think I might do a flip cup because that disturbs the paint as little as possible. Now I promised someone yesterday, uh, they asked me about um, how to get this beautiful sort of a cracking going on because they wanted to do it underneath the pour. So this is um, what I, I was really trying something out, something new. So I made a background on a very old canvas. As you can see, there's something underneath here. And um, this was uh, primary elements that was underneath that pulled straight through. As you can see, I put th these uh, long bands that you see. See the raised bands? They were primary elements. So they, when they got wet again, they sort of started to bleed and bleed it into the, um, the cracking medium. Uh, what you can use is, let me get it for you. <coughs> if I can find it. Where'd I leave it? Uh-oh. I don't know where I left it. Well, it's just a, a paste and um, it's white and you put it on your canvas and the thinner you do it, the smaller the cracks and the thicker you do it, the bigger the cracks. That's the thing. For me, it's really time that I move into my uh, new studio so I can get all my uh, stuff sorted out. So this is it, a crackle paste. It's really light and uh, that's, that's the paste, as you can see. And you just bring it on with a palette knife and then you do the, the thicker you go, the, the, the broader the cracks get. And then when you paint over it, normally this would be totally white if the uh, primary elements hadn't bled into it. So then you can put a glaze over it or you can do something else, whatever you want. But I, um, I was just testing some of the uh, iridescent paint, as you can see. This is iridescent paint from Golden. Um, I did a little bit of plastic on the background that you could see uh, Gerda Lipsky do. I was just trying some stuff out and it was pretty fun. And it's an old canvas, so, you know, uh, if it doesn't work out, you can just throw it away, right? Yeah. Okay, let's get to the pour. Now I'm going to put it in a paper cup. Because the paper cups are just a little bit bigger than my white ones, as you can see. Just a little bit broader. So, and the bottom is a little bit bigger. 
So I think this is about 220 milliliters. And I'm going to pour all of the colors in. And I'm going to make sure I get it all. What I mix it with, this is uh, Vallejo, and it has uh, only Floetrol in it. And I added like two or three drops of silicone to each color. I didn't put it in the Floetrol this time because I'm not really going for a lot of cells. For me this time, it's more about um, the colors doing, doing fun stuff. So there it is. Now I'm not going to wait too long, placing it in the middle, turning it around. And this time I am going to do this. And then I'm, uh, see that, there it goes. That's too bad. I was, um, I was expecting it to be a little bit more separate, but I'm sure that when I torch it, the good colors come up, see? That will happen. Wow, that are some awesome cells. Those are really awesome cells. Look at that. Let me get it in focus. There you go. Wow. That'd be a macro shot right there. <laughs> Is that beautiful or what? Now that is something else. Let me try to get you out of the um, out of the glare. Let's see if I can get and stabilize a little bit on my elbows. Wow. Man, that was beautiful. Now I have to destroy them. Yes, I do. There it is, back in focus. And I don't want to destroy them because they are so pretty. What to do, what to do. But I have to do tilt a little bit because, you know, the, um, the paint is too thick. So I'm doing it very slowly. As you can see. This paint makes some awesome cells. Wow, even look at that. I don't know if you can see. Oh, no, you can't. It's a little bit too dark. Okay, I'll have to just let it do its thing. I'm really trying to keep those cells a little bit circular because you know that I just do not like those long stretched cells oh but this is really beautiful yeah hmm Okay, I'll just have to let it go. That is pretty. And I just might have to mix up some more paint. But, you know, the, the, the good thing about tilting is that now the color is coming up. As you can see, it's getting a lot lighter. So I'm going to stretch it down here. That's about it. I'm going to mix some more paint. I kind of like this dark bit going here. I like that. I like this. I don't like this. This is too much um, 
the cells sort of let go so I don't like that so I'm gonna be pouring over here down here yeah and this is beautiful covering the little corner there this is beautiful yep I gotta make some paint I'm sorry I have to but you know the good thing is that you can see me do it because sometimes you know sometimes it's good to just see um, so I squared a little blue in there now I'm just eyeballing it adding a little flow troll and mixing it up that's about it then the orange just a little bit in there Adding a little bit of float roll. And I'm already looking and seeing if I can, if it speaks to me. You know, sometimes these pieces, they just speak to you and just, um, there's something in your head going, oh yeah, let's do that to it. <laughs> so I haven't got that yet. But what I could do, because there's a lot of blue down here, what I could do is just use a little less blue. Then I don't have that much chance of it going dark. That we put a whole lighter band right down here. We could do that. Let's see if we want to do that. Okay. Maybe pop it in here. A little bit of blue. A little swirl. And here we go. Pushing it up and then letting it come down to make some fun patterns. And I want to cover the corner here. See, that's pretty cool. Now that is covered too. And I need my little Clotty thing because I'm going to pull it and give it just a little bit of paint. That's okay. So getting rid of the air bubbles. Well, it has to be turned around because I, I, I really think this is the bottom. Like that. See? I like it. <laughs> I really do. Uh, I would have um, uh, had it liked it better if the blue were to wham come off the uh, come off the canvas, but um, it didn't, and we'll have to find a way to do that. Like I'm thinking now, maybe a double or a triple pour, because if you poured um, the yellow and the orange first, nah, but you need some contrasting color to make those cells pop. But as it is right now. I'm liking it. Just hoping it doesn't um, dry too dark. There you go. It's a pretty dynamic piece. See the corners sort of uh, fit in now. Oh. 
Okie dokie. I'm pretty uh, happy with it. Let's give it a little bit more focus. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's it. I like the pour. It's uh, very colorful. It is something I've never poured before. That's something I also like because you don't want to always pour the same colors. And I have to fix a little bit of the canvas here. There it goes. That side is all covered. Yep. So this is it for today. Um, I was going to do a, something with an with a ink. Someone asked me to do that. And I, uh, I do have a couple of colors of ink. I have some uh, white, I have some sienna, and some blue, I think. I'll uh, go look for them. And I might just pour it on Yupo or something. Oh, why didn't I... I was down in the... I, I'll take you guys down. I was in my studio and uh, I forgot to take... Um, first I'll show you the other one. Here it is. That one couple of days ago and this is the one where I put the gold and the holographic uh, glitter as you can see <laughs> I dropped one side and then it just went a little bit you know dragged a little bit and then I thought hey that looks cute so I just let it pour off here at the corner and I kind of like what it did see how it really made these much different shapes so instead of having that band, you know, the bit where I swiped it, now it has, if you look at it, see it, it just has a whole different thing going on. I kind of liked it. The only thing I don't like is that the, the colors turn so dark. I'm not too fond of that. Oh no, I won't take you guys down. I'll, uh, I might just uh, do a different one and stick that behind this one. So. I'm going to say bye, but don't turn off the video because there will probably be something behind this. So see you in a bit. Okay, I'm back. Now I want to scoop this up. As you can see. I'm scooping it up on Yupo. And this bit. There's a lot of blue in here, and I'm covering it and pulling it apart. Oh, look at how brown it went. See, that's the um, that's the only part that I don't like, is that these colors, because they're so fluid, they go really fast. And I'm not really sure if I really like this because, you know, even for an pendant, eh, there's a, a little bit here that I do like. But I'd rather have more orange in it. So let's do that again. I see a lot of uh, paint in here. which I will put together a little bit. This is kind of nice. is pretty I might just keep this one here <clears throat> I'll put that aside and I wanted something more bright so we're gonna give this one the orange A tiny bit of yellow. I like <laughs> playing with the paint that's left over. 
Oops, that was a little bit too much uh, torching. See there, the Yupo went. Oops, almost dropped it there. Now I'm going to do something different. See, this is where you can see how you can keep the uh, the blue separate. But still not what I was going for. Pulling it back over. See, then there it goes. There it goes brown. No, not really uh, digging it. So just put that on top there. See what happens. Not much. what that does. My torch is almost empty. Gotta get the other one. Nah, this isn't much either. Well, maybe, you know, just this bit would be nice, but Nope, not liking it. Now I'm totally, totally messed it all up. So, but that's okay. You can learn. That's kind of cool. for my other torch. Don't know where it is. I got so much mess up here now. I really, really need a uh, my my studio to be ready. See, there's almost no flame coming out. Nope, don't like it. Okay, guys, that was it. <laughs> Sorry, I made a mess. But, you know, all for the sake of experiments. So, see you later. And, oh, I see my, my other thing here. Oops. See how that turned out? That's kind of cute, isn't it? I think it would have worked better if I didn't use this uh, iridescent paint. But, you know, it does give a nice shine. So, for the people that... Um, um, I, I, I didn't expect so many people wanting to do this. Uh, you don't really need the binder. The binder is just optional. Because I put it on because it gives you a longer time to play with the uh, ethanol. And ethanol is the same as alcohol. So rubbing alcohol, normal alcohol, you can use that to do this. I think even sp spiritus. We, I don't know if that's an uh, English thing, but for Germany and Holland, we call it spiritus. You put a little bit in your water when you do your windows and it makes your window shine. So that's a, you can use that too. And um, I put it on this um, really heavy paper. This is acrylic paper. A couple of people asked me about it. And I almost forgot to show it. See, when I buy paper, I usually go, look, look at that. It's a really big, uh, big block. And it's 400 grams. So that's really heavy. 
and it is acrylic paper so it stays flat unless you really abuse it but it's cold pressed you get 50 sheets they're 24 centimeters by 32 centimeters and um, like I said 400 grams the square meter that's 190 pounds that's a lot so if you're looking for paper that stays flat and you can use um, you can even pour on this but it's really heavy and thick and that's what you have to look for if you don't have the uh, 190 pounds what you also can do if you have it a little bit thinner you can tape it down on a board and then um, wet it then let it dry and then use your uh, acrylics on it so that's um, this is a really good brand here in uh, Europe Canson they make all sorts of papers they make um, watercolor paper it's a it's a really a good quality paper so thank you all for watching I'm gonna leave you now I'm gonna stick this one behind the other one and I'm gonna wish you all a really beautiful Saturday love you all Liebe euch alle. Wiedersehen. Bye-bye.